Today we are going to do an easy crayon batik. So some of the things that you need to have available to you would be just printer paper or any paper that you have available to you would work. Some crayons, I think Crayola is the best one for this. You can use whatever paints or color that you have around. You can use thinned acrylic paint like a a fabric paint is fine. If you have temper paint, you'd want to thin that down. Liquid watercolor, you can thin that down. Um, I prefer a dark color. If you don't have any paint, you can get some old, like if you have markers, you think, oh, they are at the end of their life. Um, I'm just going to throw them out. I like to take the tips of them and soak them in water and look at that beautiful pigment that you have. And you can use that again. I would let them sit there for a couple hours. It will drain all of the ink from the markers and you will have a nice colored water that you could use for your batik. So what we're going to do is you're going to get your printer paper and you're going to draw your subject. So our subject today is sunflowers. It can be as simple or as complex as you would like to get. You don't even have to draw this dark. I just did it so that it would show up on the video. So then you just color it. You want to color and use a lot of wax. Batik means you're, you're painting with wax. And then we're going to create this really cool technique at the end. So, very waxy. It should be very, very shiny. You can overlap your colors. Um, I put a little bit of texture into the background. Um, the, I think the more you layer the colors, the prettier it's going to be. You notice here that I have some brown for the middle of my sunflowers. I did not use a brown crayon for those. I like to mix my colors together like this. So, if we learn color theory, we will know that um, the opposite of yellow is purple, the opposite of blue is orange. So I can go in here with my orange on top of the yellow that I already have, and I can color that in. It's really the mixing of all of your primary colors together, which is um, red, yellow, and blue and with white and black you can make all the colors in the rainbow. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to put some blue on top of my orange because that is its complementary color and it may look a little bit more blue at the beginning and then I'm just going to keep mixing and mixing and mixing and I like to get kind of lighter in the middle. I can go back over the top of it with my orange and you can see that when you get that wax to blend together, it makes just a beautiful, beautiful, interesting brown. And that's what that looks like. So once you get this all colored in and you're satisfied with your design, this is the hardest part, I think. You're going to take your paper and you're going to crumple it up very easy and you're just going to squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it and then you're going to very very carefully pull it apart try not to rip it and this is what's going to give it the little cracks crinkles and we are going to make it look like a batik. Smooth it out some. There we go. Nice and smooth. So then whatever you have made, whether it be your ink or your paint from your markers, I have a, um, a vat of liquid watercolor in here. I could literally just run it through and pull it up if I had some uh, tongs. If you do it that way, you probably want to wear some gloves so it won't stain your hands. But I'm just going to take um, and dip into my liquid watercolor that I had. I'm going to paint over the top. And you will see that wherever I have the wax, it, it resists 
the wax and then it sinks into the paper. If I want to do a darker batik, I can just go right over what you've colored. It's fine. And the little cracks that you made will allow that paint to sink into the paper. And then you get this beautiful, you see here where I put some white in here to make some little white uh, flowers. You can't see it when the paper's white, but once you put your paint on top, they show up. So that's really nice. So you just keep painting like this. Make sure you get all of your paper covered. And then you will want to let that dry. You don't want to go too much on there. Fix that little hole. It's okay. If you want to, you could take a tissue or a paper towel and you can blot off the excess color. I mean, as you can see where I had the little cracks in here and the little, it just makes a little, really interesting little background. I think they're beautiful. You can do this on fabric. You can do this on paper. You can do this. If you want to make a really um, cool pillow or something like that, that would be really nice. When it's all done and dry, you want to take your tissue like this and you'll want to, you want to do it when it's dry, not when it's still wet because the paper's more delicate when it's wet. But, and I'm just doing it for a demonstration. But you can do this and it removes some of the wax and it leaves this beautiful, really shiny pigment on your paper. And that is what you let it dry. It's